Hey, Dawson Ness here from MimicMethod.com and on this video I'm going to show you my productivity system because if you're trying to learn a foreign language or improve yourself at any skill, what you need is to have some sort of structure that can help you progress and move forward in a systematic and effective way. So I'm just going to give you a sneak peek into how I kind of organize my life and maybe some aspect of it will be useful to you. But before I get into that, I want to kind of show you my underlying philosophy about productivity and I kind of distinguish different parts of my thoughts and my speech into these categories. First, um, I have ideas. So your ideas are what you think you could possibly do. And if you observe your mind throughout your day, you constantly generate ideas for what you could possibly do. From something as simple as, you know, I walked outside yesterday and saw that the sidewalk wasn't shoveled at my parents' house. And I'm like, huh, I should probably shovel that sidewalk. So I have that idea. And then maybe I see someone doing something cool with their business. And I say, huh, I wonder if I want to do that with my business. And I have that idea. So what an idea is, is basically an image pops into your mind of a potential action that you could take in the future. Uh, but you most likely won't take all of those actions because there's way too many of them. So we need to filter these ideas into desires. Maybe I don't want to shovel the lawn, right? Or maybe I don't care about that business tactic, or maybe I really do. Um, point is you need to reflect on what are my actual intentions and how are they aligned with my deeper values and my highest goals. Finally, um, well not finally, next, this is a very important distinction between an intention and a commitment. An intention, an idea all happens behind the barrier of my own mind. So I'm thinking, what can I do? Do I want to do this? No, I don't think I want to do that. Is that aligned with my goals? Blah, blah, blah. And when I say it to myself or write it down, you know, I want to do this. I want to do that. This is just my intention. I'm just trying to focus my mind on a specific goal. Whereas a commitment is when I verbally articulate to another human being that I will take a specific action in pursuit of that goal. And the reason why it's an important distinction is because when I fail to um, execute or realize my intentions, I don't consider that failure. That's just part of life. However, if I make a commitment to someone or I promise that I'm going to take a future action and then I don't take that, then I will have violated my own integrity of word and I will technically be a liar. So that social pressure, I believe, is foundational to human psychology and how we actually get things done. We need to actually commit ourselves to other people in order to go through all the resistance of actually being productive and effective. So that distinction between intention and a commitment is very important. I want you to pay attention to it as you move forward. Um, finally, you have a commitment as verbally stated, and then it realizes through physical movements in the real world and action. So what you do. Um, and then finally, when you do things in the world, the world provides you with feedback. You know, there's a reaction to your actions. And if you pay attention to what happens, then you learn. And that is essentially what learning is, is when you act in the world and integrate whatever the world gives you back. So that's your effects. So in order to have an effective productivity system, it needs to do these things. It needs to capture and organize your ideas Otherwise, they float around in your head all the time, and that could be very, it can be, you know, anxiety-inducing, cause you to ruminate. Um, you just want to be able to clear it from the mind so you don't have to worry about it. Um, then it needs to align your intentions with your highest goals and values. So your intentions are a filter. So 99% of your ideas just kind of go into the waste bin, and then the ones that are actually aligned with who you want to be and where you're trying to go in life that's what you want to be able to focus your mind on. So your system should help you do that. Um, there should also be an element that pressures you to make commitments, courageous commitments, because you need to be courageous in life to keep expanding your ability and moving forward. Um, but left to your own devices, you might just kind of like, not do it. That's why having external outside accountability partners and coaches and mentors is, I believe, essential to really continually pushing you forward out of your comfort zone. And then it needs to be able to make it easy for you to schedule your actions. Nothing really matters until you do stuff. And lots of energy is wasted trying to schedule in your mind or plan out what you're going to do or remember what you're going to do. So the system needs to make that as frictionless as possible. 
Um, and then finally, whenever you do stuff, you need to know if what you're doing is actually effective. So your productivity system needs to track your progress in some sort of way. And so you can do these actions and essentially treat them as experiments and see like, okay, did this action actually have the reaction that I expected or was my thinking wrong? What, do I, what can I learn about it? That should be stored because the effects you learn um, will now integrate back into your ideas and it allow you to have better ideas. That's how you get smarter. Okay, so that's the underlying philosophy what's going on here. Now let's see how this plays in action in my actual technology and systems. So first, my main application that I use for all this is reminders for both um, Apple, uh, MacBook, and iPhone. So what I do is I have three simple lists. I have think, say, do. And I'll start with think. Throughout my day, once again, random ideas pop into my mind for things that I could potentially do. And I'm not committed to doing those things. I don't even know if I want to do those things. They just pop into my mind. I'm like, oh, maybe I want to do that. When that happens, so they don't keep bouncing around my mind and kind of causing me stress, I take out my phone, which is most of the time on me, and I have reminders in my bottom kind of list there, and I hard press on reminders, um, force touch on my iPhone, and then it pops up a thing. It says, new in think. And then within three seconds, I quickly just capture the idea. So you can see stuff like, oh, look into the Smithsonian grant, hit up my friend Sunil, uh, check out ThinkerCon, uh, make this Notion document for Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, blah, 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 buy some stupid thing, it, it, call the doctor, it doesn't matter. Just like random things that pop into my mind, okay? Then what happens is um, at the end of the week, every Sunday, two things happen. I have a uh, coaching call, and in that coaching call, I get pressured to think about stuff I don't want to think about and then make commitments I don't want to make. And then I also um, make a contract that I'm going to show you here. And essentially, I go through this in step one. This is actually after I've deleted everything. I go through and delete literally at least 50% of my ideas each week, as, far, as many as like 80%, because most of my ideas are stupid, right? Most ideas are stupid. And I look at them, I'm like, well, what was I thinking? I'm not going to do this, right? I don't got time to do this. This is not in alignment with my highest goals. This might be cool, but like, who got time for this, right? So I delete them. Um, and then the ones that I'm actually going to do something with, I come and I copy and paste them into this document. And I make, I call these seven-day contracts. Um, I make one of these each week. I've been doing it for like two years now. And essentially what it is, is I organize all these things uh, very quickly an alignment with my main areas of value. Um, so I have certain commitments that come out of my coaching calls. Um, and then there's things I want to do for my family, things I want to do for my fitness, things that I want to do with my business and just self-development and learning. And then like random stupid administrative things that like I just got to do I, I, just as part of life, right? Um, and the reason why I organize it this way is because, you know, if I find that I spend 90% of my actions on doing admin, then that's not really in alignment with my, my highest kind of values here. So this allows me to kind of see where I'm placing my time um, and, and energy. Uh, and then in the process, I like to be deleting more things and then editing it and making sure each one starts with the action verb so I know exactly what the action is to move it forward. Um, and this, by the way, is separate from um, my business. So my main priorities are in my business. I have a similar system set up, but it's integrated with other team members. But the same principles apply. I'm just showing you my personal kind of day-to-day -day one. So once I have this kind of cleaned up, I send this to my coach. And what I'm doing is I'm making a commitment to him that I will do all of these things by our next meeting on Sunday. and uh, Or at least by the end of the day on Sunday. And um, what happens then is... Uh, I now have a kind of a la carte menu of to-do items to add to my day. Now these are now gone from intention to commitment, which means when I don't do that, I'm technically lying. I'm technically failing to deliver, right? So I think very deeply about how much time and energy I have in the week before I make these commitments. And I find that the, one of the number one sources of anxiety and depression in people's lives these days is that they don't take their commitments seriously and they just tell people they're going to do stuff 
and then they don't end up doing it. And it's not about your being a bad person. What it is is that you start building up, you start just destroying your self um, respect and self confidence subconsciously. And you get to a point where you hear yourself saying, like, yeah, I'm going to do that. And then you don't have any faith in your capacity to actually realize your goals and commitments. And when you don't have faith in yourself to realize your goals and commitments, then, you know, goals and commitments are what make life happy. You move forward towards your goals. If you don't believe you can do that, then you're just going to be miserable. So if there's one piece of advice I can give from personal experience is if you struggle to follow through on your actions and you don't do most of the things you say, your number one priority in life right now should be to train yourself to be very humble and don't commit to things unless you're absolutely sure you know you can do it and then gradually build out from there and get to a point where you know you're following through on 95 percent of the things that you tell people you're going to do um a little sidebar there i made a video about that last year i could put that in the comments and you can watch more learn about that anyways moving forward i now have all these things for the week um the question is how do i actually schedule doing it so we go back to this list now um throughout the week this is these all these to do's are made on Sunday, but throughout the week, other things might come and I could instantly know that like, OK, this is important for me to do. This is in alignment with my core values. You know, my mom calls me and she needs help for something or whatever, um, but I can't do it at that moment. So instead of capturing it in think, I'll capture it in say. And what this is, is every time I tell people I will do something, I within a couple of seconds, just record it here. Same thing, a long press or a hard press on um, the reminders app open it up and I tend to record what I told the person verbatim so I don't get confused later. Um, I actually have a, I usually have a lot more in here, um, but I just clear them out at the end of the week because I've actually done the things. So that's why there's only two here. But I might be like um, telling, for example, this video, I'll tell people, hey, I'm going to make this video and send it to you. I would write it here as, you know, audience um, from the YouTube video live stream. You know, I will make a video and email you right so that's the kind of thing that i would create audience and then that way i can hold myself accountable and know exactly what i said and then make sure i do exactly what i said finally was get to the point of doing so one of the most important productivity habits you can develop is planning out your day planning out your next day the night before or the day before and the reason why you want to do it before is because prioritizing and deciding what to do takes a lot of brain energy like it literally burns glucose and metabolic energy um, for you to do that it's a very high intensive cognitive activity so you don't want to waste all that fresh you know well slept energy you have when you wake up first thing in the morning on that it's better to do it before you go to bed um, or ideally at the end of your work day and then it's just decided you know, and then you just have, you know, your do list becomes your boss. And you just, you just do what the to do list told you to do. So what happens is at the end of my day, I go and I go through here. I copy and paste items. I go through my verbal commitments. I copy and paste items. And then I go into my other business systems and copy and paste those actions and items. And I just dump them all into here. I also go into my calendar and I, um, I look at what's on my calendar and then I just copy and paste these things. Like, all right, these are a bunch of things I got to do with people. Um, and then I write it down all here. And then it's all just kind of in a random order. Now, one of the key parts of this is sequencing. And this is kind of an art form. Um, so ideally, I want to be able to do all these things in a specific order based on time of day, but also based on my energy level and how I respond to each of these. So I can go through and be like, okay, this is gonna take lots of uh, creating a video about my to-do system. It's gonna take a little bit of creative energy. I wanna have a fresh mind first thing in the morning to do that. Uh, I already did four other things before this that were also in the category of what I call deep work. Uh, well, I don't call that, people call it deep work, which is those things where you just gotta be super focused, no one's distracting you and you're in the zone. Um, and then later on in the day, I'm like, okay, well, now I'm a bit more open to have meetings and talk to people. 
and then I'll save all my kind of emailing and administrative stuff for the evening. Anyways, I sequence all of these things and I think what needs to happen first? Am I gonna am I gonna, you know, get stressed out procrastinating on this? And I should probably do it at the top of the day when my ma my willpower is maximum. You figure yourself out. But the idea is you if you you set your intention for getting all of these things done by the end of the day so you can get better at planning. Uh, but anyways, I go through and then I just start clicking them off, right? Uh, and then, um, oh, sorry, so they sequence it and then the next day I wake up and I just start to kind of click these things off as I go through the day. Once again, I don't have to think about what to do anymore because my day has been set, my calendar and schedule has been set. So um, yeah, I just gotta go in a zone and execute. And man, it's super, when you get this right, it's super motivating when you can just have a long list like this and get to the end of it. Uh, I, I'd say, I, especially in the past couple of weeks, um, I complete everything on my list probably 85 to 90% of the time. Sometimes at the end of the day, I didn't anticipate things properly, something comes up, I'm just super tired, oh my gosh, screw this, and then I move it over the next day. That's fine, as long as I'm able to get all of my commitments done by Sunday. Uh, so that's basically it. The real main takeaway here is distinguishing between your ideas and intentions, um, your commitments that you're actually telling people you're going to do, which I store here as well as here, and then being able to plan out and sequence the actions you're going to take on that day-to-day -day basis. So to review then, um, capture and organize your ideas, align your intentions with your highest goals and values, pressure yourself or get other people to pressure you to make commitments um, to keep pushing yourself out of your comfort zone and get better as a person and become more effective and make it easy for you to schedule and sequence your actions. Um, and then finally track your progress. I would include that in this video, but for my business and for myself, um, I have a kind of weekly progress tracking I do with my uh, coach or with my team and a daily kind of progress tracking, certain things I track and see if it's moving forward each day. And like, it takes me a couple of minutes to track it and it motivates you to see that you're actually doing that progress. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions about that, please ask in the comments. And um, anyways, cool, get it done.